Hello all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our customary blessing. Blessed art thou Adonai, Eloheinu, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us, and grows ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai, Eloheinu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people of Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, <coughs> Adonai Eloheinu, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may he be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. <coughs> today is the first read of Jamat names. Torah portion for today is Exodus 1 1 through 6 1. It's gonna be a doozy. <coughs> These are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob, each with his, uh, with his household Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Iskar, Zebulun. And Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All the descendants of Jacob were seventy persons. Joseph was already in Egypt. Then Joseph died, and all his brothers and all his <coughs> and all that generation. But the people of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly. They multiplied and grew exceedingly strong, so that the land was filled with them. <coughs> Now there arose a new king over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war break out, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for the Pharaoh's store cities, <coughs> Pithom and Ramses. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad. And the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves, and made their lives bitter and hard service. <coughs> and more bread, and all kinds of work in the field. And all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra, and the other Pa. When you serve as midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birthstool, if it is a son, you shall kill him, but if it is his daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared Elohim and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. So the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this? And let the male children live. The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So the Elohim dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew strong. And because the midwives feared Elohim, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every son that is born to the Hebrews you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. <clears throat> now a man from the house of Eli Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that his, he was a fine child, she said to him, Oh, she hid him three months. But she could hide him no longer. She took him, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes, and dabbed it with bit, bitumen and pitch. And she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds of the river bank, and her sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her young woman walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her woman, and she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. <laughs> then her sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse for the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? The Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the, the child's mother. And the Pharaoh's daughter came to her. Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I'll give you your wages. So the woman took <clears throat> the child and nursed him. When the child grew older, 
She brought him in the Pharaoh. She brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. One day when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked at their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He took this way and that, and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. And when he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together. And he said to the man in the wrong, why do you strike your companion? He answered, Who made you prince and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptians? And Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and saved them, the water, and watered their flock. When they came home to their father rule, he said, How is it that you have come home so soon today? They said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Then where is he? Why have you left the men? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zephora. Zephora. He gave birth to his son, and he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been so a sojourner in a foreign land. During those many days, the king of Egypt died. And the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to... To Elohim, and Elohim heard their groaning, and Elohim remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Elohim saw the people of Israel, and Elohim knew. <clears throat> now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness, and came to Hir the Horeb, the mount of Elohim. And the angel of Yahuwah appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the Elohim of your father, the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at Elohim. Then Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of, land, out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land to good, to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place... Of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to Elohim, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children out of Israel, out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you, that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve Elohim on this mountain. Then Moses said to Elohim, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, Elohim of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Elohim said to Moses, I am who I am. He said, Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent you to me. Elohim also said to Moses, Say to this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together. 
and say to them, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have observed you and what has been done to you in Egypt, and I promise that I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the land flowing with milk and honey. And they will listen to your voice, and you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, Yahweh, the Elohim of the Hebrews has met with us. And now, please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to Yahweh Elohim. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless compelled by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders that I will do in it. After that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And then, and when you go, you shall not go empty. But each woman shall ask of her neighbor and any woman who lives in her house for silver and gold jewelry and for clothing. And you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. Then Moses answered, Behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, Yahweh did not appear to you. Yahweh said to them, What is that in your hand? You said a staff, and he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses ran from it. But Yahweh said to Moses, Put your hand on it and catch it by the tail. So he put it out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his hand. That may believe that Yahweh, the Elohim of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, has appeared to you. Again Yahweh said to him, Put your hand inside your cloak. And he put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous, like snow. Then Elohim said, Put your hand back inside your cloak. So he put his hand back inside his cloak, and when he took it out, behold, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. If they will not believe you, Elohim, or listen to the first sign, they may believe the latter sign. If they will not believe in these two signs or listen to your voice, you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground, and the water that you ta shall take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. But Moses said to Yahweh, O oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then Yahweh said to him, Who has made this? Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, Yahweh? Now therefore go, and I will be your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. And he said, O oh my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the, Le the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth. And with his mouth, it will teach you both what to do. He shall speak for you to the people, and he shall be your mouth, and you shall be as Elohim to him. And take in your hand this staff, with which you shall do these signs. Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go back to my brothers in Egypt and to see Although they are still alive, and Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And Yahweh said to Moses and Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all the men who were seeking your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons, and then and had them ride on a donkey, and went back to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the staff of Elohim in his hand. And Yahweh said to Moses, When you go back to Egypt, see that you do before Pharaoh all the miracles that I put in your power. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you also shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says Yahweh, Israel is my firstborn son. And I say to you, Let my son go that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your firstborn son. At a lodging place on the way, Yahweh met him and sought to put him to death. Then Zephora took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and touched Moses. Moses' feet with it. And said, Surely, <laughs> sorry, surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me, so let him alone. It was then that she said, A bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. Yahweh said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him at the mountain of Elohim and kissed him. And Moses said, 
Moses told Aaron all the words of Yahuwah with which he had sent him to speak, and all the signs that he had commanded him to do. Then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together the elders of the people of Israel. Aaron spoke all the words that Yahuwah had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. When they heard that Yahuwah had visited the people of Israel and that he had sent their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says Yahweh the Elohim of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh? That I should obey his voice and let Israel go. I do not know Yahweh. And moreover, I will not let Israel go. Then they said, The Elohim of Hebrew has met with us. Please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice the Elohim to Yahweh our Elohim. Lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmaster of the people of their foremen, You shall no longer give the people straw to make their bricks, as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the number of bricks that they made in the past you shall impose on them. You shall by no means reduce it. For they are idle. Therefore they cry, Let us go let us go and sa offer sacrifice to our Elohim. Let heavier work be laid on the men that they may labor at it and pay no regard to lying words. So the taskmaster and the foreman of the people went out and said to the people, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go and get your the straw get your straw yourselves, wherever you can find it. But your work will not be reduced in the less. So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. The taskmasters were urgent, saying, Complete your work, your daily task, each day, as when there was straw. The foremen of the people of Israel, from Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were, be were beaten, and were asked, Why have you not done all your tasks of making breaks today and yesterday, as in the past? And the foremen of the people of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, Why do you treat your servants like this? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, Make breaks. And behold, your servants are beaten. But the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle. You are idle. This is why you say, Let us go and sacrifice to Yahweh. Go now and work. No straw will be given, to, given you. But you must deliver the same number of bricks. The foremen of your people of Israel saw that they were in trouble when they said, You shall by no means reduce the, your number of bricks, your daily task each day. They met Moses and Aaron, who were waiting for them. And as they came out from Pharaoh, and they said to them, Yahweh, look on you and judge. Because you have made us stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hands to kill us. When Moses turned to Yahweh and said, O oh Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people. And you have not delivered your people at all. But Yahweh said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Brukata Adonai Eloheinu, Malach Alom, Asher Natal Lanu. Tered Mat Vaishye, Alom Nata Betekenu, Brukata Adonai Natin Hatra. Hello all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I must say your customary blessings. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohenu, King of the universe, who sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohenu, so in the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in all the mouths of all your people Israel, may we, in our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name, study your Torah, for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, 
<coughs> Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed you, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you and may he be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Isaiah 27, 6 through 28, 13. In the days to come, Jacob shall take root. Israel shall bloom and put forth shoots and fill the whole world with fruit. Has he struck them as he struck those who struck them? Or have they been slain by other slayers as their slayers were slain? Measure by measure, by exile you contend contended with them. He removed them with his fierce breath in the day of the east wind. Therefore, by, his, by the guilt of Jacob, <clears throat> therefore by this, the guilt of Jacob will be atoned for. And this will be the full fruit of the removal of his sin. When he makes all the stones of the altars, like chalk stones crushed to pieces, no ashram or incense altars will remain standing. For the forfeited city is solitary, a habitation deserted and forsaken, like the wilderness, there the calf grazes. There it lies down and strips its branches. When its bows are dry, they are broken. Women come and make a fire of them. For this is a people without discernment. Therefore he who makes them will not have compassion on them. He who formed them will show them no favor. And that day from the river Euphrates to the brook of Egypt, Yahweh will thresh out the grain, and you will be gleaned one by one, O people of Israel. And in that day a great trumpet will be blown, and those who were lost in the land of Assyria, and those who were driven out of the land of Egypt, will come and worship Yahweh on the holy mountain at Jerusalem. Ah, the proud crown of the drunkards of Euph Ephraim. And the fading flower of its glorious beauty, which is on the head of the rich valley of those overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has one who is mighty and strong, like a storm of hail, a destroying tempest, like a storm of mighty overflowing waters. He has cast down to earth with his hand. The proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim will be trodden underfoot. In the fading flower of its glories, glorious beauty, which is on the head of the rich valley, will be like a first ripe fig before the summer. When someone sees it, he swallows it as soon as it is, as soon as it is in his hand. And that day, Yahweh of hosts will be a crown of glory, in a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people, and a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, and strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. These also reel with wine and stagger with strong drink. The priest and the prophet reel with strong drink. They are swallowed by wine. They stagger with strong drink. They reel in vision. They stumble in giving judgment. For all tables are full of filthy vomit, with no spare with no space left. To whom will he teach knowledge? And to whom will he explain the message? Those who are weaned from the milk, those taken from the beast, taken from the breast, sorry. For it is precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a line, there a little. For by people of strange lips and with a foreign tongue, Yahweh will speak to this people, to whom he has said, This is rest, give rest to the weary, and this is repose, yet they will not hear. And the word of Yahweh will be to them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. That they may go and fall back, and be broken and snared and taken.
Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who gave the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Brukata Adonai Eloheinu, Malak Elohim, Ashenatu, Lana, Tredemet Vaishye, Elohim, Nata, Betekenu, Brukata Adonai, Natin Hatra. Hello and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before you get started, I'm going to say customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Eloheinu, sing the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we, in our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed, you, blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah. To his people Israel. Blessed you, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Tuesday's read is Jeremiah 1 1 through 2 3. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests who were in Anathan, Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the world, to whom the word of Yahweh came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. And until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the captivity of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord Elohim, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But Yahweh said to me, do not say I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares Yahweh. Then Yahweh put out his hand and touched my mouth, and Yahweh said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms, <laughs> to pluck up and to break down. To destroy and to overthrow, to build and to paint. And the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. Then Yahweh said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. The word of Yahweh came to me a second time, saying, What do you see? And I see, a, and I said, I see a boiling pot facing away from the north. Then Yahweh said to me, Out of the north disaster shall be loose upon all the inhabitants of the land, for behold, I am calling all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, declares Yahweh, and they shall come, and every one shall set <coughs> his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem against its walls, all around and against all its cities of Judah. And I will declare my judgment against them for all their evil and forsaking me. They have made offerings to other gods and worshipped their works, the works of their own hand. But you, dress yourselves for work, arise and say to them everything that I command you. Do not be dismayed by them, lest I dismay you before them. And I, behold, I make you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar, in bronze walls against the whole land, against kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they who shall have... But they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, declares Yahweh, to deliver you. The word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem, thus says Yahweh. I remember the devotion of your youth, your love as a bride, how you followed me in the wilderness, the land not sown. Israel was holy to Yahweh, the first 
fruits of its harvest. All who ate of it incurred guilt. Disaster came upon them, declares Yahweh. <laughs> Rest art thou, Donai Elhenu, King Universe, who gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Donai, giver of the Torah. Brukata Donai Elhenu, Malak Alum, Asher Natun Lanu, Tradimat Vaishye, Alum, Nata Betakenu, Brukata Donai Natan Ha Torah. Hello and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say God's merry blessings. Blessed art thou, Adonai al Hanu, King of the Universe, who so sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to ignore ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai al Hanu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people of Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and serve your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you. Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel, bless you, Adonai Elohimu, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave the Torah. Bless you, Adonai, give of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence and enlighten you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Matthew 22, 41-46. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Yeshua asked them a question, saying, What do you think about Hamashiach? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David in the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Blessed art thou, Adonai el Hanu, King of the Universe, who gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Brukata Adonai el Hanu, Melach Alum. Asher Natil Anun, Teradimet Vaishye, Alum Nata Betekenu, Brukata Adonai el Natin HaTorah. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I must say a customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elhenu, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elhenu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people of Israel. May we and your offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people of Israel. Blessed you, Adonai Elhenu, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations, and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence and enlighten you. May be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. We have two reads today. Luke 5, 12 through 39 and 20, 27 through 44. Alright, first one. Come on, there we go. While he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy, and when he saw Yeshua, he fell on his face and hugged and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Yeshua stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priests and make an offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded for the proof to them. But now you mourned the report about him went abroad, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. On one of those days, as he was watching Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there, who had come from every village of, Ga of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with them to heal. And behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed. 
and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Yeshua. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles in the midst before Yeshua. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven. And the scribes and Pharisees began to question, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but Elohim alone? When Yeshua perceived their thoughts, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And immediately he rose up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went home, glorifying Elohim, and amazement seized them all. And they glorified Elohim and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen extraordinary things today. After this, he went and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. I'm leaving and leave every and leaving everything he rose and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his house, and there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at the table with him. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at the disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Yeshua answered them, Those who are who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said to him, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours eats and drink. And Yeshua said to them, Can you make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one who tears a piece from a new garment and puts it on an old garment, if he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, desires new, for he says this old wine is good. There came to him some Sadducees, who were denying that there was a resurrection, and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, having a wife but no children, the man must take the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and died without children. The second and third took her, and likewise, all seven left no children and died. Afterwards, a woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had her as a wife, and Yeshua said that the sons of this age marry, and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy to attain to that age and to the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. For they cannot die any more, because they are equal to angels and are sons of Elohim, and being sons of the resurrection, but that they are but that the dead are, are raised. Even M Moses showed in a passage about the bush where he called the Lord the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. Now he has not he is not Elohim of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. Then some of the scribes answered, Teacher, you have spoken well, for they no longer dared to ask him any questions. But he said to them, how can they say that Hamashiach is David's son? For David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies my footstool. David thus called him Lord, so how is he his son? Blessed art thou, Donai Elhinu, King Universe, who gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Donai Giver the Torah, Brukata, Donai Elhinu, Malak, Alom. Asher Natal Nu Taret Emet Vaishie Alom Nata Betaginu Brukata Donai Natina Tara. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say a customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai El Hinu, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to regard ourselves with the words of the Torah. 
Please Adonai. Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we know our offspring, your offspring, and your people, the house of Israel. May we all together know your name and your Torah for sake, fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, Elohim, your king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai make his presence to May Adonai bless you, keep watch over you, may Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you, may Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Acts 3, 12 through 15. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk. The Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, the Elohim of our fathers, glorified his servants, Yeshua, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he had decided to release him. But you denied, you denied the Holy and Righteous One, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life. When Elohim raised the dead to this, we are a witness. Uh, Acts 5, 27 through 32. When they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have f f filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey Elohim rather than men. The Elohim of our fathers raised Yeshua, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. Elohim exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so it is the, the Holy Spirit whom Elohim has given to those who obey him. Acts 7, 13-36 But as the time of the promise drew near, which Elohim had granted to Abraham, the people increased and multiplied in Egypt until they arose over Egypt another king who did not know Joseph. We dwell truly with our race and force our fathers to expose their infants so that they would not be kept alive. At this time Moses was born, and he was beautiful in Elohim's sight, and he was brought up from for three months in his father's house. And when he was exposed, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was in, instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he might he was mighty in his words and deeds. When he was forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them being wronged, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He supposed that his brothers would understand that Elohim was giving them salvation by his hand, but they did not understand. And on the following day, he appeared to them as they were quarreling and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong each other? But the man who was wronging his neighbor thrust him aside, saying, Who made you a ruler or a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? At this retort, Moses fled and became an exile in the land of Midian, where he became the father of two sons. And when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, set in a flame and a fi of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. And as he drew near to look, there came a voice of the Lord, I am Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob. <clears throat> and Moses trembled and did not dare to look. And the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their groaning, and I have come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses, whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This man Elohim sent as both ruler and redeemer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out, performing wonders and signs in Egypt and at the Red Sea and in the, the wilderness for forty years. Acts 22, 12-16 And one an Ananias, a devout man according to the law, Well spoken 
of biology Jews who lived there came to me and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sights. And at a very at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The Elohim of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness to him, to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Acts 24, 14 through 16. But this I confess to you that according to the way which they call a sect, I worship the Elohim of our fathers, believing everything laid down by the law and written in the written in the prophets, having a hope in Elohim, which these men themselves accept, and there will be a resurrection of both the just and the unjust. So I'll we'll always take pains to have a clear conscience toward both Elohim and men. Hebrews eleven twenty three through twenty six. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were afraid of the king's edict. By faith Moses, when he was growing up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of Elohim than to enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. He considered the reproach of Hamashiach greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, and he was looking to the reward. Blessed art thou, Adonai, Elohim, you king of the universe, who gave the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Bukha ta Adonai, Elohim, you malach alolom. Asher natal anu emet vaishiye, olom natal betenkin, you bukha ta Adonai, natin artarach.